As our communication methods have been dominated by data, IP has emerged as the converging layer for all types of network services. At Nokia, we believed our technology could both simplify and support the growth of this new data-rich world. And we're the first to design IP routers specifically for reliable delivery of services. From terabit scale core to gigabit weatherproof access routers, all leveraging one common operating system and management platform. The Nokia model is service-centric, as opposed to the more common but generic routing model geared for best effort connectivity. The Nokia model is optimized towards efficient and reliable delivery of a variety of services for critical and business applications. Services such as virtual leased lines and circuit emulation. Layer 2 multipoint virtual private LAN services, VPLS. And Layer 3 virtual private routed network services, VPRN. When a service is provisioned on a Nokia router, data is transported across the network over end-to-end -end tunnels. There are four main service components needed to construct a service. One component is the customer entity. A customer is associated with a set of specially created services and is denoted by a customer ID. Another component is the service type. This defines the type of service. The third component is the service access point, or SAP. This is the point at which a service begins or ends. Depending on the service configuration, there can be more than one SAP. A good example is in a multi-point service, such as a VPLS or VPRN. And finally, the fourth component is the service destination point, or SDP, which logically directs traffic from one router to another through a unidirectional service tunnel. There are several steps to configuring a service. First of all, we create a service with an associated customer ID. The next step is to create a SAP for the service and bind the service to an SDP. Incoming customer data through a SAP is then directed via the bound SDP into a service tunnel to reach the remote service router. Once the traffic exits the tunnel, it will travel to the remote SAP and reach the remote customer equipment or circuit. The SDP can be reused for other services destined for the same remote router. Unlike the generic routing model, Nokia's service-centric approach offers operators the following key benefits. Many services of different types can be bound to a single tunnel. The configurations of tunnels are independent of the services they carry. Any changes can be made to a single logical service entity rather than multiple ports. A failure in the network core affecting a service tunnel can be pinpointed to specific services. Operational integrity can be verified by a single OAM operation rather than through dozens of steps. The concept of service routing is at the heart of Nokia's IP routing portfolio, supporting networks that run many different services and end users applications, and providing simplified provisioning, extensive performance monitoring, and efficient change management that enable operators to be more responsive. Nokia's model for service routers is just one example of how we create technology that thinks ahead.